Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make this greeting card, and we are going to focus on the colored pencil technique. I'm using a stamp from our sponsor, ArtNico.com, and I chose this because it had a lot of big open area that we could really work with colored pencils in. We're going to be doing some blending techniques in a bit, and I wanted to show you what I originally wanted to do. Um, I love the steampunk image from the steampunk stamp that they had, but there wasn't a lot of really big spaces for me to blend in, so I decided that I would use this set instead, and I will link both below just so you can uh, find that if you are looking for it, because it is a fairly new set. So I wanted to share a tip for when you want to um, stamp, but maybe you don't want to cut apart your sheet and mount your stamps. Uh, I have the 50, uh, 50 State Bird set from ArtNeco.com, and I'm so afraid of losing one of them that I don't cut them apart, and they have little frames around them, so it's easy to do this technique with. So this is great for, like, um, for stamps that are kind of like collage style or just an all-enclosed image, so you don't have to, uh, you, it's not something you'd want to pick up and stamp down, so any large image stamp is really good for that. So first you want to add ink and look at it and make sure it's shiny everywhere, okay? So then you'll know you'll, you have everything covered with ink. And then you just want to put your cardstock down. And without um, wiggling your paper, you just want to give firm, even pressure all over the back. It's a printmaking technique. I also use this technique whenever I'm stamping any large wood-mounted stamps that um, don't really stamp very well if I try to use them traditionally. Anything that's really detailed works really well with this technique. This paper that I'm using is quite coarse. It's um, kind of like the paper that you would get like on a brown paper bag, really rough. And there we can see we have a really nice impression. And then what I'm going to do is tear it. And you do kind of want a bit of a rough um, uh, paper when you are doing colored pencil. It doesn't need to be as rough as like a pastel paper or a watercolor paper, but you do want it to have some roughness to it. So just go around and tear every edge. There we go. And colored pencil is very forgiving, so if you did happen to smudge the ink at all when you were tearing, it's really not going to make a big difference. Just make sure you wipe that off before you stick it back in your storage binder or however you store your stamps. So now I want to zoom in a little bit while we color because I want you to be able to see the detail. And I'm going to start with um, the uh, kind of main areas here. And I'm going to first give it a nice coat of this kind of teal kind of teal green color. Now you can use any sort of pencil sharpener for this. Um, I'm using the the uh, Spectrum Aqua Blend colored pencils. They're um, kind of newly reformulated, so I'm just trying out their special sharpener that they sell. It's really just a regular sharpener that catches the, uh, the shavings. You could also use a knife to cut away the, um, the wood casing and just reveal the lead. That's another way to do it. It just depends if you like that tip. Um, for coloring or not. I like to work on the edge of the pencils and that way I can kind of turn it around and keep that nice sharp point in case I do need to get in and detail something. So we're going to start off by just doing a coat of this all over the background. I'm not going to go over, if I go over the plants I'm just going to make sure I do it fairly lightly so I'll still be able to get some green in there. I just want to make sure I am not um, obliterating any of the um, any of the design. So I don't want to go on top of the dragonfly or over that moon. I just want to kind of go up to it. And I find you get the best results with colored pencils when you work in layers. So this is our bottom layer. I have to be careful just to kind of lightly color because I don't want to fill in the tooth of the paper. I want to make sure there's plenty of roughness left to for the other colors that I'm going to layer on top of it to catch. So very lightly over the little seaweed or whatever that is there. Little plant. And just keep filling in. The nice thing about this technique is you can use whatever colored pencils you have. I will put a link to this, uh, these pencils here that I'm using in case you want to check it out. But any colored pencils should work just fine. Now I'm going to go in with a darker blue. This is, uh, that one I just used was called Duck Egg and this is called Lake Blue. And I want it kind of dark up near the edges just to give it a little dimension. And then I'm going to use lighter, lighter pressure and pull that color down a little bit so it kind of layers over and blends in with that duck egg aqua color. And I'm going to go and do that on every side. I'm also going to add a little bit of shading around the uh, dragonfly and the moon just to kind of bring it apart from the background a little bit. 
And now I'm going to go over with another layer, this time a little bit firmer, with that duck egg, and that's going to blend the two colors together. If I want any more of a dark frame, I can go back in this dark color. And you'll notice the more you put on, the less the uh, paper wants to take it. It almost wants to resist a little bit. So you have to color a little bit firmly each layer. There. Now I'm going to go in with a green and color this uh, plant here. I'm just using some just some quick sharp strokes here. I just want to I do kind of want to fill in the tooth quite a bit here. I'm going to do the same over here to this little I don't know if it's a it's some sort of plant. Probably some sort of like water plant. And then to highlight, I'm going to go over that with um with some yellow and it will mix and just kind of give me a little bit brighter, more lively color. Now something you may notice if you have arthritis or um, or anything where like carpal tunnel, you may find this very difficult and this might not be the medium for you. Uh, it's better to find that out on an inexpensive set of color pencils than it is to go out and spend a hundred dollars and then realize that that you can't really use them because they hurt your hands. So I do want to put that out there just to make sure that um, that nobody goes out and buys a huge set if they if they find that it's too fatiguing to use them. Uh, so now I'm going with probably medium pressure and circular strokes, and I'm filling in the moon behind the dragonfly. I'm putting on a fairly good coat here because I know I don't need to do too much blending. And you'll get a feel for how much pressure to use the more you experience you get with a medium. Now I'm going to a, a uh, pumpkin orange color and I'm going to just kind of add some dimension to the edges. You get a lot of really um, nice depth when you do layer your colors over like that, taking two colors that are next to each other on the color wheel and overlaying them. It just gives you a really nice look. For the wings, I'm going to use a couple different shades of purple. I'm going to start off with um, this kind of medium, it's called fireweed, but it's kind of like a uh, like a hot neon purple color, and I'm going to do light pressure and give it a coat of, give the wings a coat of this. And so if you put your medium color down first, it kind of helps you decide what else you need. And so now I'm looking at that, I think I want to put some shadow in there. So this is a darker purple, it's called boysenberry, if you have these uh, pencils. I haven't checked to see if the colors are the same between the old um, Spectrum Noir color blends and the new ones. I don't remember, my kids actually use my uh, Spectrum Noir ones more than I do. I had left them on the coffee table in a coffee tin and uh, well, the kids loved them, so I let them use them. And now I'm going to add some highlights with just white. You can see how opaque that is and how it really blends in there and makes those colors look really sharp. Makes them look really luminous. It's such a nice way to add a highlight. And now, because I want the whole um, the whole wings to just have more of a a cohesive color veil on them. I'm going over it with this pink color. There we go, and there we have that nice rich pinky purple wings there, and this was called Petal. Now for the body, I'm going to go back to my um, my blues from the background. I'm going to start with a fairly thick color aqua, because I do like that, and I want that to be the majority of the color. Then I'm going to go along the edges uh, with the lake blue, a little bit of shadow. Then I also have a um, parole blue that I'm going to add. And then I think I'll highlight it with a little bit of white. And there you have it. That is all there is to coloring the dragonfly image.
Now we can put our card together. So I'm going to be using some uh, Japanese papers that my friend Marty had sent me. These are Chayogami papers. Um, just a very pretty um, Japanese printed paper that I wanted to try out. And I'm also just using a piece of just kind of tone-on-tone -tone textured scrapbook paper and a craft card base, which I'm going to set aside and I'll tell you why in a second. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, start adhering down my papers. And these actually came pre-cut. Uh, Marty sent them to me pre-cut and I think they kind of came in a pack with a bunch of different uh, sizes. So I figured I'll just go, I'm just going to go with that um, because I really liked these. Uh, I really liked the uh, patterns on the shape that they were. So I figured I'm just gonna use what I have. This is a great way to use up your scraps. So if you've been hoarding some like washi paper scraps, uh, it's a great way to use them up. So I'm just overlapping those. And then I thought I'd take a couple, I did cut down these little blue pieces. I thought those were kind of pretty. Um, but I'm not going to glue those down yet until I get my focal image down. I'm going to use some foam tape for this piece because sometimes like um, like a rough craft paper, like a natural craft paper will resist regular adhesive. I think it's just because of the texture of it. It makes it difficult to bond, but uh, foam tape is extremely adhesive and works really well. And you could use um, crafters foam tape or you could even get the stuff from the hardware store for when you're doing like a card that you're going to mail. You don't have to worry about acid free as much as you would like if you were doing like a scrapbook page or something because generally cards get sent and enjoyed and and uh, that's kind of sometimes they get saved. I save mine, but not everybody does. I don't worry. What I'm saying is I don't worry about the acid content on uh, on green cards that much. Not that I don't think everybody just saves my cards forever and ever. I just don't care. <laughs> oh, isn't that awful? All right. So now that I've got that piece down, I feel like I can glue those. And I do like to use wet glue for this because I find it's a little bit easier to get it down well. And the, the tapes can be a little cumbersome. And I was hunting and hunting for the little... Drag I found one like one stray dragonfly brad and that's what's on here and then I'm like where I know I have more of those where those things go and I couldn't find them and I was going through my drawers and I made a big mess my floor is covered with brads and I'm like all right that I give up and I went to start organizing and putting things away and sure enough as I'm starting to try to find a storage solution for my brads I found the package of dragonfly brads so I was so happy I love these they're so cute um I was thinking I could also do um, ginkgo leaves that, that that would be pretty too but uh, I just think this is just the perfect touch now I'm gonna put this on now because that way when I attach it to my card base we're not gonna see the hole from the um, from the brad and you can use the old-fashioned setter tools that you um, actually I think these will even set with a pen you can use like a pen on the back side I've never done that I always just use my um, my tool here but it says you can actually just use like a ballpoint pen on the back and just like punch your hole and set it there and flip it over and stick a pen in there but I, I don't know I, I just I always just use this it's a tried and true method so it works for me it's just made from a really soft aluminum or something so that it can do that but um there we have that I also want a couple little um sparkles on there but I think I'm gonna adhere this onto my base and I'm hoping I have enough adhesive in my adhesive gun because I know I am running really low I have like a hundred rolls of it in my drawer, so I'm not that concerned. <laughs> it just makes it inconvenient for filming, that's all. And I'm going to stick that down like that. And we're going to put a few of these little sparkles on. And I think it's kind of fun if you don't line them up perfectly, if you kind of have them go a little off, especially with all the ge geometric things we have going on here. Um, I think it's kind of cool if you just... Um, kind of put them, let them go in a little bit more of an organic pattern and you have to these are I got these in a bargain bin somewhere and they um the little adhesive things want want to stay on my thing so if that happens to you you could always just glue them on but there you have it a very quick and easy card uh it's a great way to practice your colored pencil skills and if you're interested in the colored pencils i'm using i will put a uh, link in the video description to hallmark scrapbook because they just got them in and their prices are cheaper but they sell out really quick so if you know you want them i would go check them out there and also i'll put links to all the stamps i used from artneco.com and if you go to my blog tomorrow i will have a giveaway of the stamp that i used so make sure you go to my blog and click on that blog post and leave a comment for your chance to win it will not be posted until wednesday morning though just so you know so if you go over tonight 
it's not going to be there yet. You'll have to wait till tomorrow to enter that contest, but um, it should be a good one because that's such a pretty stamp. I really like it. I want to thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this tutorial, I would appreciate a thumbs up and share it with your friends. That's how we help each other. We help each other learn. We uh, spread the joy of this wonderful hobby. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting!